All right. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're very excited to uh, be able to share about all things AmeriCorps with everybody today. Um, I believe we are recording already, so I just wanted to confirm that everybody who registered for today's event agreed and knew that the session was going to be recorded. If you have any concerns about that, uh, my name is Celia Robidoux and I'm the host um, for today's session through Zoom. Um, and so please do let me know if uh, there's anything that we could do to help uh, get you settled in. So um, we're right up at three after nine. And what we'd like to do to get the uh, session started is to go over just a couple of housekeeping pieces. Um, so AmeriCorps uh, is an opportunity for you to gain a lot of professional development um, as well as uh, education resources, which will be discussed in depth uh, by Emily Litchfield, um, who I'll turn it over to in a second. These are all the logos of the participating uh, sites and organizations today. Um, and for those of you that are participants and here just to learn, we're gonna ask that if you're on um, your computer or if you have the ability on your mobile device to rename yourselves using this instructions um, by adding the breakout session that you're planning to attend today into your name. So if you could put your first name and then the name of the breakout session um, in the same way that this is uh, the conventions um, as or the, as the instruction. So click the three dots, click rename, and then put in the room that you would want to attend. This will help us uh, get you to your room as quickly as possible to allow you the most time with each program within that group. Um, if you forgot which group you signed up for, that's okay. Um, these are the four breakout sessions that we'll be having this morning. Um, even if you signed up for something different, um, but for example, if on your registration you signed up for education, but instead you're more interested in learning about Maggie's place, please go ahead and join Healthy Futures. Um, so that will allow us, again, to be able to follow up with you um, per your preferences in your um, registration link. Um, before I turn it over, um, are there any questions? If so, please put them in the chat and then we can go ahead and field those and then get started. Okay, I don't see anything coming through in the chat. So um, to start off our agenda, we're gonna have, again, Emily Litchfield from the Governor's Office of Youth and Family present on what is AmeriCorps. Um, and she will present for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then we're gonna move into breakout rooms. Uh, Emily, are you able to take it away? Hi, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Um, I do want to preface my uh, presentation with that my folks just got here to pick up my kiddo. And so my dog is going to go crazy in about <laughs> three minutes. So I just wanted to preface that. But, um, you know, that's the world we're living in today, isn't it, with all the Zoom meetings and working from home. Um, I am Emily Litchfield. I'm the director of AmeriCorps State and National Programming uh, here for the state of Arizona. Um, I work at the Governor's Office of Youth, Faith, and Family. Um, I'm going to give, as Celia said, just a broad overview of what the service opportunities are and, and look like in our state. Um, I'll have a few links that I will be dropping into the chat box as well uh, for you to explore further. And then um, we'll have the uh, breakout rooms a little bit later where you can talk with each one, uh, each uh, program individually. So I'm really excited that everybody is here today. Let me share my screen. Uh, 
Okay, and I guess I need to get into presentation mode so it is, looks much nicer. Alrighty, so what is AmeriCorps? Um, we have a little tagline that we like to use and that's getting things done for America. Um, it comes right out of our uh, AmeriCorps pledge, which I will share a little bit uh, later. I'm going to start off by trying to share this video, um, which is available on YouTube. Super inspirational. Hope it works. Do we have sound or no sound? Uh, we don't hear any sound. Okay. Let's That is up on the way. There come the dogs. Yeah, that's good. Is the that helping or no? Okay. To stop talking about the problem and be the solution. This is your moment to create your own future, to bring people together and seek common ground. This is your moment to make our country safer, smarter, and healthier. You can inspire a kid to a brighter future. Build a house for a family in need or rebuild a community after disaster. Work in the wilderness to protect our public lands. Help a veteran find a home, a job, or a mentor. This is your moment to shape the future. This is your moment to be the greater good. Join America. A non a presentation. Oh. Okay. Um, the joy of God. Um, so that, I love that video. It gets me a little bit teary eyed um, every time I watch it. So it just feels so inspirational to be able to get out into the community to work alongside um, our partners, either our American partners or other organizations, community members, to really dig in and get some important work done. Um, for a broad overview, um, AmeriCorps is a federal agency. It's formerly known as the Corporation for National and Community Service with the mission of improving lives, strengthening communities, and fostering civic engagement. There are a few different AmeriCorps programs. Uh, there's AmeriCorps State and National, AmeriCorps VISTA, AmeriCorps NCCC, and then AmeriCorps Seniors. And in the next couple of slides, I will touch on the differences between each of those programs. So AmeriCorps is rooted in the tradition of service. Um, it be really found its roots in uh, 1933 with the Civilian Conservation Corps um, and putting people back to work uh, during the Depression. In 1961, um, President Kennedy, uh, well, there was the Peace Corps, <laughs> and then in 1964, the VISTA project was modeled after um, Peace Corps. A lot of folks uh, sometimes will refer to AmeriCorps VISTA as domestic Peace Corps. It's really looking at how we alleviate poverty in communities um, in the U.S. and its territories. In 1969, the AmeriCorps Seniors programs uh, started with a foster grandparent program, which is focused on uh, youth engagement in schools. Um, not long after, the Senior Companion Program um, also uh, came along, and that was focused on how we, uh, how seniors are uh, serving in the community to help other seniors who are homebound. In 1993, under President Clinton and the Domestic Volunteer Services Act, um, all of these pieces came together under the Corporation for National and Community Service and um, the official name AmeriCorps um, 
was born. And uh, in 1994 was the very first year of AmeriCorps service um, in the United States. Um, really a, a labor of love, I would say. Um, we are established in federal statute and um, our budget is determined by uh, Congress and the Senate, uh, the way many federal programs budgets are, are, um, are made. Um, in 2009, there were some enhancements to the program through the Serve America Act. Um, and uh, in 2020, I want to share, oh, I don't see my notes. Um, I'm going to share here in the chat box the um, link to this because I think it's very interesting. Um, is the uh, the in the 2018, I believe, um, Congress established the Commission for um, uh, Military, National, and Public Service. Um, and in that, they um, did a lot of exploration on military service, on public service, on uh, national service, including AmeriCorps, and uh, made some recommendations to Congress on uh, what this looks like moving forward. The report's very interesting, but a couple of things as it relates to AmeriCorps is, uh, number one, just the importance of um, national service in general to local communities and what it brings to the members uh, as far as benefits. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, they also really highlighted a recommendation that all um, Americans should participate in some form of service um, in their lifetime, whether that's joining the military, participating in the national service program like AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps seniors, or um, working in some kind of a public service field as well. The report's really interesting. Um, also super interesting is um, that we are uh, included in the uh, American Recovery Act, which is going through Congress right now and then should be signed by uh, President Biden very soon. That will include extra uh, money for more programming and more membership opportunities in all of the states. So that's kind of exciting as well. Um, so the AmeriCorps state and national programs, these are a little bit about the eligibility requirements and, and what you um, will get through participation. Um, AmeriCorps state and national members uh, to be eligible need to be 17 or over. Um, they participate in direct service activities and that's um, tutoring and mentoring kids. Um, working with uh, middle and high school students, accessing uh, edu college education or post-secondary education, vocational opportunities, et cetera. Um, we have AmeriCorps members out on uh, national trails and in public on public lands, um, removing invasive species and repairing trails so that um, citizens can enjoy those. Also helping folks secure jobs and housing, which we know with the pandemic, um, currently that is a big issue for uh, some people. And so we have AmeriCorps members working in that capacity. The cool thing about the AmeriCorps state and national um, program is that it offers both full-time and part-time opportunities. Um, so it's a great uh, fit for folks who are still in school or who um, maybe want to do something part-time while they're still working or something like that. Um, you do receive a living allowance uh, while you are serving, and that's uh, usually distributed either every two weeks or monthly um, by your program. The full-time positions might qualify for medical benefits and childcare um, if you need those. And all of the positions um, that anyone that completes the term of service successfully qualifies for a Siegel Education Award. And the Education Award is very cool. Um, it can be used to repay student loans, uh, to seek post-secondary and vocational opportunities, as well as the certificate programs, 
And for our AmeriCorps state and national members who are over the age of 55, those education awards can be gifted to a child or a grandchild, which is a really neat uh, opportunity thing to be able to do. Next, we'll talk about our AmeriCorps VISTA. AmeriCorps VISTA um, in, in, it stands for Volunteers in Service to America, and that's that program that started in uh, 1964 under President Kennedy with the focus on um, alleviating poverty. AmeriCorps VISTA members need to be over the age of uh, 17 as well. Um, the difference between the state and national members and our VISTA folks is that the VISTAs are really focused on indirect service or capacity building services for an organization. Um, these are prod more project-based activities. Um, so uh, building a volunteer program or um, recruiting and managing volunteers for an organization, uh, helping fundraise or, or donor support, um, also doing some community outreach and education, developing flyers, a social media campaign, building a website, those kind of things. Um, and the priority with the VISTA is to um, think about the sustainability and how the VISTA members are building the tools and templates necessary to be able to give that project back to the organization so they can run it long term. The VISTA member positions are full time. Um, so 40 hours a week for a one year commitment. Um, they do have also a summer associate program, um, which is also kind of more of a full time position, but shorter term for just a couple of months. Um, the VISTAs receive a living allowance as well. They also uh, could qualify for medical and child care coverage and um, they receive the Siegel Education Award or uh, VISTAs have the opportunity to choose a cash payment um, instead of the education award at the end of their term of service. Although the education award is like three times the value of the, the cash stipend, so I encourage folks for the education award if it makes sense for you. Um, we also have the AmeriCorps NCCC and FEMA Corps. These programs are a little bit different in that um, they are full-time team-based residential programs. Um, so, and they're open to folks who are ages 18 to 26. Um, for these projects, uh, you are assigned to one of these four campuses. And um, you go there, you do a bunch of training, you meet your team, and then um, you travel in a team of uh, 10 to 14 individuals around the region. So uh, our Arizona region is Denver, Colorado, and that includes um, Arizona, New Mexico, Denver, uh, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, uh, Utah, Colorado. I think that's it. Um, and so you would be traveling with your team around all of these different states, participating in a bunch of different projects. Um, and I've included a few pictures here. Um, in one, they are rebuilding some housing. Um, in this other one, uh, they are actually gleaning wheat um, from a farm. So uh, you might be working on a farm. You might be working in an after school program. Um, you might be rebuilding some trails. Uh, the possibilities really are endless. So it's a great opportunity um, for folks who want to travel around, who want to see um, areas of the U.S. and um, and be able to make a difference in community. Um, in addition to the living allowance, this actually also uh, provides housing while you're traveling and then also um, a allowance for food. So you really work super closely with your team um, and, and develop lifelong bonds in this and, and with the other programs too, but this especially because you're living, you're around the same folks 24-7. Um, we also have AmeriCorps seniors. These programs um, are specifically for uh, folks who are 55 plus. Um, they are direct service opportunities and a few of those examples um, could be tutoring and mentoring kids in schools. 
Um, also uh, working one-on-one -on -one with uh, homebound seniors um, or persons with disabilities. They do have uh, full and part-time positions available uh, depending on the program and um, members receive a living allowance. Uh, they uh, might also receive mileage reimbursement or other benefits um, as funding allows. Um, so we really, with all the AmeriCorps programs, um, run the spectrum of, of ages 17 all the way up to, I think we usually say 99 because that's uh, what, what the system limits our recruitment to is we can only put two digits in there. Um, but I, I remember um, during President Obama's uh, term of, of service, I believe it was his second term as president, um, but he uh, brought one of the AmeriCorps senior volunteers to the White House and she was 104 years old and still volunteered every single day um, going to the school and, and working with the kids. And um, so it just offers incredible opportunities, I think, for folks of all ages to be able to continue to be involved in the community. Okay, um, here is our AmeriCorps pledge, and I love to share it um, because it really gives a, a good overview of um, the commitment to service, um, getting things done for America, and we're really working with communities to make the community safer, healthier, um, and the individuals as well. Um, AmeriCorps members take action. Um, they look for commonalities. Um, they in uh, our leadership or our staff teams, we often talk about how do we get to yes um, and and never giving up, persevering in the face of adversity. So um, I, I think it's a great thing to be able to be a part of. I want to share a little bit about um, what's happening with AmeriCorps in the state of Arizona. And I'm going to drop a link to the full report. Uh, in the chat box in case you all are interested in seeing more. And um, there is links for, for every state um, and, and their reports and what they are doing. Um, but currently we have um, about 1,600, well, currently, this is from last year. Um, we had uh, roughly 1,600 AmeriCorps members um, serving in our state and um, almost 800 uh, AmeriCorps senior um, members or volunteers serving in the state as well. Um, um, and there was about a 24 and a dollar investment I think we're we're losing you. I can't. Emily, I'm so sorry. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh goodness gracious! Thanks, Sarai. Um. I want to get into next um, some of the focus areas of, of where AmeriCorps members might be serving. Um, one of the priority focus areas is disaster services. And uh, most often folks are teaching disaster preparedness in communities, but they're also responding to um, disasters. For example, uh, there uh, were the uh, fires last summer in uh, up in Flagstaff and down in Tucson, and we had AmeriCorps members uh, responding to some of the flooding that was happening um, and uh, being able to um, get sandbags out and, and really help folks to protect their homes. Um, we also focus on economic opportunity. We're uh, looking at how we improve access to housing and also helping folks secure employment opportunities. Um, focusing on education as well. Um, how do we improve school readiness and academic, academic performance for students? And that's not just um, tutoring and, and 
teaching kids how to read and that kind of thing, but it also is bringing um, some social and emotional skills into the classroom, um, being a, a trusted adult that they can uh, rely on and, and connect with. And sometimes that's even more uh, what they need than just teaching them how to read, if they need to be able to connect with somebody who cares. Um, some of our projects focus on environmental stewardship, um, improving the condition of trails, uh, local parks, and waterways. Uh, oftentimes, our environmental stewardship programs are also focused uh, on water conservation here in Arizona and providing education around water conservation issues. We also focus on healthy futures, um, which seems like such a broad category and, and really is how are we enhancing um, life, quality of life for homebound seniors and people with disabilities? Um, we also look at uh, how do we make sure that folks have access to food um, and access to health care and other things like that um, that will serve them well into the future. And then lastly, um, there's an emphasis for some programs on serving veterans and military families. Um, so a lot of the uh, activities we talked about, tutoring and mentoring and uh, access to employment and housing and those things, but with a specific focus on serving veterans and military families. Before we do our breakout rooms, um, I do want to do a quick plug for um, our Arizona Summit on Volunteerism and Civic Engagement, which is next week, and it is virtual. Um, we have 12 workshops that are designed to um, inspire, energize, and mobilize folks to uh, get out and participate in community service at, at um, whatever they feel like that looks like for them. Um, so I'm really excited. It's 100% free. Um, and a number of the folks who are on the call today that will be sharing um, are, is, are participating um, in, and some are presenting workshops as well. So it's a pretty cool event. I want to make that plug real quick. And I will pause for questions um, if there are any more broad questions. Um, but otherwise, I, we are ready to rock and roll with the breakout room. Thank you so much, 